Welcome to Get Sleepy, where we listen, we relax, and we get sleepy. I'm your host, Thomas, and it's such a pleasure to have your company. Tonight, we'll visit a family's workshop where they produce and sell beautiful Persian-style carpets. Their designs are so rich and intricate, there's something almost magical about them. Let's enjoy this time of transition from day into night, where your body can relax and your thinking and problem solving can switch off. Just like when you turned off the light in your room or your bedside lamp, that is what you can do now for your own body and mind. Take a deep, calming breath in, and then ease it back out, feeling tension and energy melt away. Let's do two more of those slow breaths, in through the nose, and gently back out. One more time, breathing in, filling up your lungs, then letting go with the exhale as the weight of your body sinks deeper into bed and you move closer and closer to the land of sweet dreams. Now that your mind and body are becoming calm and more settled, Watch an image appear in your imagination. It's a mud brick house in the center of an ancient city. The climate is hot and arid here, and the color of the house is almost the same as the earth, a rusty, reddish brown. The ground floor is almost entirely taken up by a store and workshop. If you look through the windows, all you can see from floor to ceiling are stacks of colorful, patterned carpets. This is where Idris and his family live and work. Let's join them as our story begins. Long ago, in a faraway city, lived a boy named Idris. He spent most of the day at school, and the rest of his time was divided between his friends and family. After school, he would roam the streets of the city with his friends. He'd explore the alleys and markets and play ball games in the dusty square. And then, when the sun went down, he would head back home to the large mud brick house where he lived with his extended family. On the top floor was the bedroom Idris shared with his two older brothers. Downstairs were his parents' bedrooms and the rooms belonging to his aunt and grandparents. 
the ground floor was the largest, and the area where the family spent most of their time. This was the location of the store and the workshop. For generations, Idris's family had made and sold the most exquisite carpets in the city. People would come from across the land to commission a decorative carpet or to choose from those on display. They came in all sizes, colors, and designs. There were small prayer mats in green and gold. Displayed on the walls of the shop were scarlet rugs with gorgeous, swirling patterns made from metallic thread. And at the back, rolled up tightly, were the heavy, expensive carpets that were too big to put on display. When unrolled, they showed dazzling floral designs and patterns within patterns. When Idris returned home, he liked to walk through the shop, greeting his aunt who worked at the counter. Then, after passing through this treasure trove of carpets, he would go through the beaded curtain doorway at the back of the room. He liked the cool, ticklish sensation of the beads on his skin and the musical sound that the curtain made as he passed through. The room at the back was the workshop. This was where his parents and elder brothers were hard at work right now, sitting at the looms. They were so focused on their work, it was as if they were under a spell. Idris sometimes felt reluctant to interrupt their trance. He would stand and watch them for a while, admiring their skill. At the moment, the family were working on two large carpets that had been specially commissioned by a wealthy man from a neighboring city. They would take months to complete. Idris's parents worked at one loom, while his brothers sat at another. Both looms were vertical, and the four family members sat cross-legged on floor cushions, weaving by hand. as their fingers moved swiftly between the long strands of wool. It looked as though they were playing a stringed instrument. Their movements were so graceful, and Idris found himself mesmerized. He knew from experience how difficult the work was, requiring patience creativity, and painstaking attention to detail. It also called for a certain kind of dexterity, which Idris didn't have. He tried to learn many times, sitting at the loom while his parents, grandparents, or brothers patiently tried to teach him. Idris had already accepted that he was unlikely to become a carpet maker. When he grew up, he would do something else. He wasn't sure what, as his ideas changed from one day to the next. Sometimes he daydreamed about life as a traveling merchant riding a horse from city to city, through mountains and deserts. 
or he would imagine a career as an astronomer, studying the planets and discovering the secrets of the universe. Or perhaps he would simply stay here with his family, selling the beautiful carpets that they created. That could be nice too, he thought, remaining in the place he loved and with the people he loved. But the future still seemed far away. He had plenty of time to work out what he wanted to do when he grew up. In the meantime, he was happy to watch his family at work and to drift from room to room as he waited for dinner. Tonight, his grandmother was preparing his favorite rice dish with spices and vegetables. While his parents and brothers put the finishing touches to the day's work, Idris passed through the rattling bead curtain once again. He always enjoyed wandering up and down the densely packed aisles of the carpet shop, gazing at the products that were ready for sale. There were so many of them, and they were all so beautiful. He ran his finger over the soft wool, tracing the maze-like patterns from the edge to the center. It felt soothing, following the curving line all the way to the middle. When Idris touched the carpets, he sometimes thought that the varying colors and patterns felt different to each other. Of course, they were almost all the same material. The yarn was made from sheep's wool and dyed with natural colorings, like roots and berries. But when he brushed his finger over a rug, he felt different sensations depending on the part he touched. As his finger moved from crimson to indigo, or petal to vine, something changed. He felt a pleasant shiver running through him, like a cool breeze on a warm night. There was something magical about these carpets. His eye was always drawn to one carpet in particular, Hanging on the back wall was a large rectangular rug. The plush background was a deep burgundy red, but the carpet seemed to feature all the colors of the rainbow. Emerald green, saffron yellow, and so many others. Certain details shimmered in silver, gold, and pearlescent white. It looked as though a single moonbeam had woven its way through the carpet, making the patterns shine. The carpet's central design depicted the tree of life, a beautiful golden tree with countless shining branches, dripping with fruit. In each of the four corners was a small, richly detailed garden, contained by a decorative wall. What Idris loved most about this carpet was that each garden was slightly different. From a distance, the design looked perfectly symmetrical. There were four identical gardens, each with an identical fountain 
in the middle. But close up, subtle differences emerged. One garden resembled an orchard of figs, while another was filled with pomegranate trees. The animals also changed from one garden to another, from goats to hens, and horses to peacocks. Even the grass varied. The garden in one corner had vertical lines of golden grass, while the garden below had silver waves that resembled an ocean. As a young boy, Idris had spent hours gazing at this carpet, hypnotized by the intricate details. As his gaze drifted from one garden to the next, he wondered which was his favorite. One day, when he grew up, perhaps he would have his very own garden, with a fountain, peacocks, and pomegranate trees. Now that he was a little older, Idris still liked to daydream about the gardens. But he also found himself thinking about the person who had woven them, his great-grandmother. According to family legend, she had created this masterpiece single-handedly in just a few months, after the inspiration came to her in a dream. Idris had never met his great-grandmother, but when he admired her creation, he felt a sense of connection to her. Even though he didn't share her talent, he felt proud to be related to someone who could create a thing of such beauty. Unlike the other carpets on display, the garden rug was not for sale. It was priceless, a precious family heirloom. Even if a wealthy customer came to the shop offering all the gold in the kingdom, they would never part with it. Idris was glad to know that his favorite carpet would always be here with pride of place on the back wall. He could look at it whenever he liked, lingering over every dreamy detail. Later that night, when the rest of his family were sleeping, Idris found himself thinking of the carpet once again. Random images from the day drifted through his mind. The sun-washed square where he'd sat and talked with his friends after school. The colorful baskets of freshly dyed wool drying in the sun on the patio. And the woven images of the four gardens, each one a small, glittering paradise. Idris wasn't tired enough to sleep just yet, but he was happy to lie in bed watching the slow procession of images passing dreamily through his mind. The room was quiet except for the soft snoring of his brothers and the distant call of a night bird beyond the window. It felt as though the bird was the only other living creature awake at this time. When it was taking a little longer than usual to fall asleep, Idris often liked to get out of bed for a while. 
he'd walk around the house, take a deep breath of fresh air on the roof terrace, and clear his head. It was a kind of break, which left him feeling refreshed, yet somehow sleepier than before. When he went back to bed, he usually fell asleep as soon as his head touched the pillow. So, after lying awake for a while, Idris decided to get out of bed. He lit a candle, put on a pair of light slippers, and quietly crossed the room, taking care not to wake his brothers. Then he slowly walked downstairs until he was standing in the darkened shop. In the midnight hush, the shop felt like a shrine. It was completely silent, and the only light came from Idris's flickering candle and the glow of the moon through a single window. The silver moonbeams seemed to land lightly on the stacked carpets. Noticing the way the light fell, Idris smiled. Perhaps the moon shared his instinct to be gentle and move softly. In a moment, he would go outside. It was warm tonight, and he wanted to stand on the terrace and savor the cool breeze before going back to bed. But first, he would allow himself one last look at the garden carpet displayed on the wall. He loved the idea of having it entirely to himself. There was no one sitting behind the counter, and there were no chattering customers to distract him. It was just him, alone, transfixed by the splendor of the woven tree and gardens. Time seemed to stand still. Everything looked different in the candlelight, with shifting, blurring colors and optical illusions. At one point, the carpet itself seemed to move in the breeze. A gentle wave spread through the fabric causing the patterned leaves to ripple like water. Idris blinked and looked around in confusion. The air was still and the window was closed. Besides, it seemed unlikely that a gentle night breeze could move a heavy carpet like this one. He must have been sleepier than he'd realized to imagine such a thing. Time to go to bed, he told himself. But when Idris looked at the carpet once more, he was sure that it was moving, gently rippling, then billowing out from the wall. He stepped back and watched in amazement as the carpet moved smoothly and silently away from the wall. Now it was floating right in front of him, hovering mid-air. Idris blinked and rubbed his eyes. He must be dreaming. But there it was, right in front of him. 
he reached out to touch the soft, familiar fibers of the carpet, and realized it was really happening. The carpet was floating, flying. Now it was moving towards the stairs. It looked like a vast butterfly or strange sea creature swimming through the air in slow motion. Although Idris knew it couldn't be alive, in that moment the carpet seemed to be sentient. It was moving with purpose, somehow guiding him. Idris followed, still feeling like he was dreaming, or in a waking trance. Up and up he went, past the bedrooms where his family were sleeping. Following right behind the carpet, he went all the way to the top of the stairs, until he was standing outside on the roof terrace. It was a beautiful starry night. On any other evening, Idris would have come up here to stargaze. But tonight, his eyes were fixed on the magical apparition in front of him. The carpet had come to a stop but it was still floating, slowly undulating in the air. Some of the threads seemed to catch the moonlight, shining brightly. Idris watched in wonder. It was like something from a fairy tale, one of the dreamy stories his mother used to tell him at bedtime when he was a little boy. Her stories were full of magical moments, with fairies and genies and talking animals. Imagining was one thing, but seeing was quite another. Idris felt a surge of happiness even if this was all just a dream. What a wonderful dream it was. But it felt so real. And when the carpet spread itself out before him, Idris didn't hesitate. Somehow, he knew instinctively what he had to do. He sat down in the middle of the carpet, right on the image of the tree. Once he was sitting comfortably in a cross-legged position, he stroked the velvety surface, giving the sign that he was ready. The carpet seemed to understand the signal. Just seconds later, it began to move once more, slowly lifting itself off the ground. It moved up and up until it took flight just like a bird. All of a sudden, Idris found himself riding a flying carpet. He was being carried above the rooftops, smoothly and effortlessly, as though he weighed no more than a feather. Idris looked around in awe, peering over the edge of the carpet. He was already so high up, it felt as though he were riding on the back of a bird or a winged horse. The carpet moved confidently, fluidly, 
just like a living creature. It was strange just how natural it felt, sitting on a flying carpet. Idris felt comfortable and supported, trusting that it would carry him safely. As the carpet glided slowly onwards, Idris enjoyed the bird's eye view of the city. He knew these streets so well, yet they looked completely different from up here. Gazing down at the rooftops, he hardly recognized where he was. Of course, at this time of night, the city was shrouded in darkness. Nearly everyone was sleeping. The only light came from flaming lanterns in the street and the occasional candle burning in a window. The moonlight didn't illuminate the details, but it cast everything in a soft, silver glow. The shining rooftops seemed to have been polished, burnished like a precious metal. Idris imagined that a magical nighttime transformation was taking place. After midnight, the moon carried out a mysterious ritual shining on each house in turn. Meanwhile, the residents slept peacefully, unaware of the magic above their heads. Idris smiled. He felt lucky to be the only one awake to witness this special moment. But as the carpet drifted east towards the river, he realized that he was not alone after all. There was at least one other person in the city who was still awake at this hour, enjoying the tranquility of the night. Near the river, was the Grand University building, with its tall brick tower. And at the top of the tower was a man looking through a telescope. Idris knew that there were astronomers in the city, but he'd never seen one at work before. As he flew towards the tower, Idris peered curiously over the edge of the carpet. To his surprise, he saw that the astronomer was a young man. For some reason, Idris had expected to see someone who looked like a wizard. But this astronomer was just an ordinary man. He might have been one of Idris's brothers or cousins. The astronomer was so focused on his stargazing that for a moment Idris thought he would fly past unnoticed. But just then, the astronomer stepped back from the telescope and looked up right at Idris and the flying carpet. Idris and the astronomer were now separated by just a few meters of air. They stared at each other in silence, in mutual wonder. And then, not sure what else to do, Idris waved shyly. After a moment's hesitation, the awestruck astronomer waved back. 
just like Idris. He was probably wondering if he was dreaming. And if not, it was time to pack away his telescope and go to bed. The carpet flew on, drifting parallel to the river. Now that he was feeling more at ease, Idris decided to lie down. The soft wool of the carpet felt as comfortable as his bed. Lying on his back, Idris was in the perfect position for stargazing. He didn't have a telescope like the astronomer, but he could still appreciate the beauty of the stars. They were so far away, and yet their light had travelled all the way here, shining in the sky over his city and over his house. From here, he could see nothing but stars. It was as if he was being carried up into the sky, lifted by the night breeze like a floating leaf. The wind felt so soft on his skin, blowing lightly through his clothes. After the heat and humidity of the day, it felt wonderfully refreshing like a cool bath or a dip in the river. Idris could smell the river too, its strong scent carried by the same breeze that was carrying him. Breathing in deeply, he recognized other aromas, the distinctive smell of the dusty earth and the fragrant trees in the gardens below. Idris was now feeling so deeply relaxed, lulled by the gentle motion of the carpet, he could have almost fallen asleep right there. He imagined himself drifting off as the carpet followed the winding river on and on, until he reached the distant sea. But the carpet seemed to sense that Idris was ready to go to bed. It changed direction, and when Idris peered over the edge, he recognized this part of the sleeping city. There was the dome of his local temple, and nearby, the square where he played with his friends. And now, he was floating above the roof terrace, in the place where his adventure had begun. The carpet had taken him home. It descended just as gently as it had taken flight. Idris found himself being lowered so gradually, so softly, that he hardly felt the landing. After stepping off the carpet, he began to head downstairs towards his bedroom. This time, the carpet followed behind like a loyal pet. When Idris got into bed, the carpet settled on the floor beside him. Perhaps it was tired too, Idris reflected. After the long journey, they were both sleepy and ready to rest. 
as Idris made himself comfortable, moving his pillow and rearranging the sheets. He noticed that the carpet was doing something similar. Ever so slightly, it shifted position. Then, the patterned surface rippled, as though a breeze were passing through. Idris imagined the carpet taking a deep breath, just as he was doing now. A deep breath in, then out. Idris closed his eyes. At last, he felt ready to sleep. And just moments later, he drifted off, dreaming of the wind and stars and his magical moonlit flight.